chapter 19, verse 1 through 10 in the NIV, and it reads as follows. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man that was there by the name of Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted, to see, he, wanted who, he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he was what? Because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Oh, do you believe Jesus is coming your way? This, this next part of an eight clause of a sentence possessed me. When Jesus reached the spot, that, that, that's it right there. When Jesus reached the spot, Zacchaeus had already gotten there, but when Jesus reach the spot. He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. <laughs> but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because this man Two is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Can you say amen? amen. Take me back up to uh, the third verse, please. Uh, no, five, verse five. When Jesus reached the spot, my subject this morning is simply hit the spot. Whatever you got to do, whatever you got to crawl through, whatever you got to cry through, whatever you got to pray through, whatever you got to endure, whoever's got to hate on you, whoever despises you, whoever turns against you, none of that is going to matter as long as you hit the spot. You will not spend the rest of your life nor legacy talking about the obstacles that got in between you and the spot. If you hit the spot, you will forget the struggle that preceded the spot. Somebody in here has been commissioned by the Holy Spirit. Somebody watching online has been commissioned by the Holy Spirit to hit the spot. Somebody shout, hit the spot. On your way down to your seat, tell your neighbor, I gotta hit the spot. Holy Spirit, speak in this place today. Ratify yourself, establish yourself, extend yourself, magnify yourself, electrify, illuminate, declare yourself in such a dynamic way that we are left awed by the presence of your glory. I thank you in advance for what you're about to do. I believe you, O oh God, to have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Dr. Maya Angelou is known to have quoted this statement, which is, become a, a household uh, reflection of some of the many granular wisdom thoughts that she left as grains of sand in time that extend beyond death. She says, when a person tells you who they are, <laughs> believe them. And this grain of wisdom is quite profound and quite prolific. It is quite impactful. It, helps us to understand the sociological impact that we have dealing with people, the psychology behind people, to understand that when a person tells you who they are, to believe them. 
uh, not to argue with them, not to be, have such a Messiah complex that you are trying to turn water into wine. Leave that for Jesus. It is what it is. You will notice the enemy tempted Jesus to turn the rock to bread, but if it's a rock, it's a rock. And some of us are bent on turning people into what we want them to be rather than to accept them as they are. So Dr. Angelou concluded when people tell us who they are, believe them. The reality, however, is most people don't know who they are. So it is not that you meet people so often who have a definitive that describes accurately and profoundly who a person is, but rather, in fact, you have most people who have a question, not an exclamation point over their head because they are uncertain about who they are. They're not foolish or ignorant, simply evolving, simply transforming, simply vessels of clay spinning on a wheel, touched by a master who it does not yet appear what they shall be. And so when we ask them who they are, it becomes difficult for them to define who they are because they are yet becoming. The process of yet becoming is very important. The process is more important than the product. Because if the process is not comprehensive, the product will be fragile and broken. We race to the finished product but we don't have a great appreciation for the process. I personally believe one of the reasons that it became difficult for Adam to withstand the temptation that Eve offered to him is that Adam was created grown. And anytime you are thrust into something without process, you lack the ability to be able to manage what has been given to you because it is in fact the process itself that helps to teach you how to manage what has been given to you, thrust upon you. He was born a man. Being born a baby and evolving to a toddler and becoming a young person and ultimately going through adolescence is a part of your development that helps you to self-discover who you are. But to be shaped out of clay and blown a breath of life into and wake up a man and wake up a husband and wake up a father is a lot to thrust on somebody who was a lump of clay a moment ago. And yet there are some people in this room that will be thrust into areas that do not reflect your background. And it will be difficult to withstand the very thing you ask God to do because you ask God for the product, not the process. And many times God will oblige you and allow you to have the product without the process and you don't realize that it is in fact the process that prepares you to withstand the weight, the pain, and the agony of the product itself. I submit for your consideration that 80% of people who hit the lottery go broke in two years. They go broke in two years because they are thrust into a lifestyle for which their life has not been built up to. They don't have the right attorneys. They don't have the right PR people. They don't have the right accountants. They don't have the right relationships, the accruements that accessorize the level of grandeur to which they have been lifted. So there they are with a Bill Gates wallet and a Joe Pools Hall mentality. It is better to enter into a thing gradually. So the first man, Adam, was born a man. The second man, Adam, was born of a virgin. And look at how much better he did with temptation because he went through process. He was born of a virgin. He lived in a manger. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. He he confounded the doctors and lawyers at 12 years old. He drops out of sight for 18 years because real greatness must be incubated in isolation. 
I said real greatness must be incubated in isolation. You don't want to, you don't want the spotlight to hit you while you are yet evolving because the critics will kill you before you become who God wants you to be. So sometimes God will hide your 18 years of confusion about who I am until you come to some conclusion about who you are and then bring you back into the spotlight. Tina Turner was better on her second round than she was her first round because she had time to incubate for a moment in obscurity to sort through the linen of her marriage and her life and her trials and her failures requires privacy for reflection. What I exalt before you is not the promise, but the wilderness. It is not the mandrakes, it is not the milk and honey that I came to preach to you about. It is the significance of the wilderness the isolation, the frustration, the murmuring, the complaining, the times that you feel like throwing up your hands and walking away, those are the times that prepare you for the promised land. And if you don't have that preparation, you won't be able to fight off the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Gerashites, and all the things that go along with what you have been placed into. NDRA, NDRE says it like this, slow down baby, you're moving too fast. You got your hands on the wheel and the foot on the gas. You're about to wreck your future running from your past. Slow down baby, you're moving too fast. Now, slow down messages are not easy to preach because people like right now messages, immediately, straightway, suddenly message. But the reality is in order to have something that lasts a lifetime, you have to slow down. Sudden decisions are not good decisions. Sudden decisions are often built off of emotionalism. And then when the emotion changes, the decision is made and all you're left with regret and pain and agony. I bring all of this before you today because finding out who you are takes time. It takes a long time because somebody asks you who you are at 15 is a completely different answer from who you are at 25. And then somebody comes along and asks you at 42 who you are and you want to cancel everything you said about 25 because you are yet becoming. It takes you a long time to really be able to answer that question and at the risk of disagreeing with Dr. Angelou, please don't tell me too fast who you are because I might believe it. And then my belief would imprison you to who you were. It's okay to say, I don't know yet. I'm becoming, I'm developing. I'm not sure of who I am. It's, it's, it's okay to say I'm still on a journey. I, I want to give you language that describes confusion, incompleteness, isolation, and wandering. You can just say I'm still on a journey. I'm still becoming. I'm still evolving. I'm on the road to greatness. I'm on the road to wisdom. I'm on the road to victory. I'm on the road to mastery. I'm not a maestro yet, but I'm on the road to becoming. I'm not professorial yet, but I'm on the road to becoming, and I'm satisfied to be on the road. Anybody okay with not being finished? Because if you are not okay with not being finished, you will torment yourself trying to be what you are not to live up to an image that is, and if you are not satisfied with being on the road, you will build camouflage to cover your imperfections so that you will appear to be further along than you are. If you are not willing to be on the road, you will spend too much money on bling to look like the room you're in and not have the experience and the language to communicate in the room you're in. Just because you can buy a Brioni suit doesn't make you have a PhD. You, you have to learn how to give yourself time 
to evolve. I take the time to set it up this way because what is, there are many things that are distinctive to me about this text. I think we have done Zacchaeus a disservice uh, because Zacchaeus' sermon should at least be preached as much as the woman with the issue of blood. He is in the same straits. He is rejected by his people. He is ostracized by his own. He is alienated and regulated to a group of people that has, has earned the ire of his peers, and yet he would see Jesus. He's in the same situation because Jesus does not come to see him. He goes to see Jesus. He's in the same situation because he has to press his way through the crowd in the hopes of getting in the path of Jesus that he might receive something meaningful that is life-changing and we hardly ever talk about Zacchaeus at all. And I want to bring it to light this morning and talk to you just a moment or two about Zacchaeus because everything important that happened to Zacchaeus happen on the road. Now let us put the text in context. Jesus is himself on a journey. He is on a death march to a cross. He's on a death march to an execution. He is on a death march to have everything that he has taught put on trial by the nails in his hands and in his feet and the piercing of his side. And now we have to prove what we've been preaching all of this time and he's marching to, toward it, perhaps with some anxiety, with some trepidation, with some, uh, re, re, some resentment. Perhaps there is some a turmoil, get that from me. Perhaps there is some turmoil going on in his life because Jesus has to grapple with the fact that the only way he can validate who he is is to become more vulnerable. And anytime you have to become more vulnerable to be successful, it becomes more difficult because we are much better at camouflaging vulnerability than allowing our vulnerability to become the canvas of which greatness is shown on. Because you have to be strong to be weak. <laughs> See, little people can't let themselves be weak. You have to be strong enough to lay your armor down and know that if I lay it down, I can take it back up again. You have to be confident enough in who you are in order to be nice to people that have been nasty because you know you didn't lose anything by being nice to them. Little people can't be nice to nasty people. They have to get even because they are so little that they don't want you to see their littleness. So they dress up in their daddy's shoes and their daddy's clothes and they walk around like they're important. But just because you got your daddy's shoes on doesn't make you anything but a five-year-old with a 10-foot, with a 10 size 10 shoe on. It doesn't even fit your foot, but you're wearing it because you want to camouflage your vulnerability. Jesus is on the road unlike any other road that we will ever see him on. It kind of reminds me of David being on the road uh, back to Bill uh, to establish his kingdom after he has taken Judah and now after Israel, he is on the road. The trouble happens on the road. Uzzah reaches out and touches the Ark of the Covenant and he dies and the trouble happens on the road and, and, and David is delayed for three months uh, out of frustration because the trouble happens on the road. You don't have to remember the Bible story, just remember that the trouble happens on the road. Every, every trouble happens on the road. The woman with the issue of blood was trouble happening on the road. Blind Bartimaeus was trouble happening on the road. The trouble happens on the road. Once you get to a steady place, a safe place, you get to a place of resoluteness and confidence, but while you are in transition, all hell breaks loose. All kind of turmoil breaks loose. All kind of inner pain and insecurity breaks through. And all of a sudden you have to grapple with who you present yourself to be while you are wrestling with who you are. 
Now, I know you can't afford to say amen to this because you cannot afford to let anybody know that there is any contradiction between what you have presented and what you represent when the lights are out and the crowd is gone and the people have gone away. I know you can't let anybody know on your job all the different voices that are talking on your shoulder while you go into work. I know when you walk in the office, you're gonna walk in with total confidence and nobody will ever realize that you were scared to death of the promotion that God gave you. And I also know that you will secretly resent them for not comforting what you couldn't even show them. I know your marriages will implode because your real self starved to death while your companion fed your fake self. I know that loneliness exists no matter how many people are around because it doesn't matter how many people are around you as long as they're around you and they don't know who you really are. We are only comforted when we are transparent. When we find the kinds of relationships with which we can be authentic and we can be real and we can be who we are and it, it needed to be okay. Now, I don't know if you can handle this, but it needed to be okay for Jesus to be worried. He couldn't show Matthew and Bartholomew or, or, or Judas or any of the rest of them, but he needed to be able to go in the Garden of Gethsemane and wrestle with himself a little bit and say, you know what, I love you, Daddy, but I don't know about this cross thing. I don't know whether I want to do this. Now, if it be thy will, pass this bitter cup away from me. You can't take everybody into transparency. Only a few people can handle who you really are and respect your ability to produce real miracles. But Jesus had the benefit of growing up. Grown in the spirit, but growing in his humanity. Fully God in the spirit, but growing like a child in a manger, nursing at his mother's breast, playing games. And it was hard for him to be understood because they kept saying, is not this the carpenter's son? The hardest place to flourish is in the place where you grew up. Oh, you ain't gotta say nothing. The people you grew up with know too much. They remember too much. They've seen too much. And they start saying things like, I knew you when. I knew you where. I knew you how. And, and they can't know you now because they're still stuck on when. So Jesus is on the road to fight with the angel of death, to rip the sting out of its paw, the victory away from the grave. This is not a time that he needs distraction because he is headed toward the cross. Everybody in here has had their crosses. It's hard to be present and polite when you're headed for a cross. It's hard to be congenial and mannerable when you're headed for a cross. It's hard to be compassionate and giving when you're headed for a cross because it is natural to do reflection of, of can I handle not the crown, but can I handle the cross that creates the crown? Meanwhile, Zacchaeus, the Bible takes the rare occasion to tell us that he is short. Why does the Bible, who seldom describes the height of its characters. Take the time to point out to us that he was short. 
It doesn't say that about many other characters. Only one I can think of off the top of my head is that Saul was tall. He was a head and shoulders above other men. But as a rule, the Bible doesn't tell us about the physical characteristics of the character, especially this one-off mention of Zacchaeus. Why was it important that he was short? And I assume that if you are a short man, you were a short child. And having been a child myself, it is a disadvantage to grow up around other kids when you are shorter than them. You are more apt to be bullied, more apt to be picked on, more apt to be ostracized, more apt to be criticized, more apt to go home crying to your mama, more apt to go home with scars and bruises because you are short. So we must then understand that what we call the Napoleon spirit is a derivative of the anger that mounts into the victim after they have become weary of being short. They attack with severity. They assume you don't like them. If you come up on me, I'm not gonna have to give you. You don't know who you feel. I know I'm don't let this, you this. Zacchaeus is short, so we know about his height and we know about his job. He is neither Hebrew enough or Jewish enough to be embraced by his brethren because both culturally and spiritually he is an outcast. Bear with me, I'm going somewhere. He is an outcast because he is a tax collector. Now at first you would compare that to working with the IRS, but you have to realize that he is not collecting for the Jewish nation. He is collecting for the Roman Empire. So he is a flunky, let me break it down into an African American colloquialism, he's an Uncle Tom. He's, he's a big old Uncle Tom who has gotten rich from ripping off and exploiting and exposing his people. So he has no hiding place amongst his people. And he is rejected from the Romans because no matter how good you try to act, you're still not one of us. And he was short. Watch out for people that nobody likes. Watch out for people that have been locked out of the clique and locked out of the group and locked out of the club. Watch out for people that are misfit, misplaced people. I know they got some problems, but when they get their problems worked out, God is going to do amazing things in their life. Are there any people in the room? I want to talk to some people in the room that have never been able to fit nowhere at no time with nobody, no matter what you did, no matter what you wore, no matter how you changed yourself, you still didn't fit. And you had to learn how to be cool with being a misfit. A short tax collector. He cannot reap the benefits of the camaraderie that comes along with being the oppressed. Nor can he have the fraternity of being the oppressor. In other words, he can't go to the country club and he's not accepted at the barbershop. And he was short. Oh, uh, any short people in the room? Vertically challenged people. The truth of the matter is everybody should have put their hand up. Because the Bible said, I all have sinned and come. 
Yeah. All have sinned. All have sinned. Rich folks, poor folks, well-dressed folk, white folks, black folk, brown folk, Canadian folk, American folk, Nigerian folk, Bohemian folk, all have sinned and come short. And he was short. I want to talk to some people who can admit I come up short. I come up short as a Christian. I come up short as a preacher. I come up short as a mother. I come up short as a father. I come up short in my life. I come up short as a professional and I'm doing the best I can with what I got because every day I got to deal with the fact that I am I had to fight harder because I was short. I had to fight longer because I was short. I had to do what I had to do to compensate. To compensate for the nagging, gnawing reality that I am short. I'm married, but I'm short. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to mess with you a little bit. I'm a mother, but I'm short. And I deal with the guilt of being short. And I have a dream, and I have a goal, and I have a vision, but I'm short. And the worst part about being short is, I thought maybe if I wear these heels, or, or maybe, maybe if I stood up on a step ladder, or, 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 or maybe if I climb up on a rooftop, or maybe if I climb up a tree, maybe you won't notice that I'm short because we spend our lives trying to hide our vulnerabilities. So he was short. So he was rich. There is a correlation between short and rich. If I don't excel at this, at least I excel at that. (laughs) Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me. See, I'm trying to tell you that so oftentimes what drives you to be the most successful is the terror of being short. I'm trying to tell you what makes us need to compensate for our inadequacies is the awareness that if you saw who I really was, you wouldn't like me. And so I bought all of this stuff so you wouldn't see. That I'm short. Now I have to live with the contradiction of I'm powerful, but I'm short. I'm connected, but I'm short. I'm wealthy, but I'm short. And I can't make either truth go away. I can't stop being rich and powerful, and I can't stop being short. Can I talk to some people this morning? that are living with contradictions that you can't talk to anybody about because deep down on the inside, they talk about how great you are, but you go home with how short. Come on, where are my short people? Make some noise. Where are my short people? 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 Make some noise. I want to talk to some short people. You might be seven foot two, but you're still short. You might be six foot eight, but you're still short. You may have more degrees than a thermometer, but you're still short. In fact, that may be why you got the degree. Because if I get enough degrees, maybe you won't see. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Let me quit. Maybe you won't see. Where are my real people at? I want some real people. I need about 3,000 real people that'll take 30 seconds and praise him in spite of your shortness. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can come out of the choir. They can come out of the musicians. They can come out the back. They can come out of security. But I need about 3,000 people who knew the odds were against them. And in spite of your shortness, God bless you to make it anyway. Make some noise in this place. that can't clap about being short, you just proved how short you are. Because your ego won't allow you to even admit in a church that you are short. But your wife knows it, your children know it, your best friend knows it, and you're just a liar trying to act like you're not short. So I'm gonna give you a repentance moment. All the short people, give God a praise right now. and tell them I come up short. 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 I come up short at the bank. I come up short with compassion. I come up short with empathy. I come up short with patience. I come up short with longevity. I come up short with loyalty. Somewhere in my life, I come up short. So I dress up more, so I stand up more, so I bought me a boat, so I got me a gun, so I try to be more distinguished, so I try to be more intellectual, because I don't want you to see that I'm short, and the Bible has told me that all have sinned and come short. I wish I'd have known it was all of us. I thought it was just me. And as long as I thought it was just me, I kind of hated me. And I prayed to be like you. And then I met you and found out you short too. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. I met you and found out you short too. And finding out you were short too is what helped me with me. Because as I found out how short you were, I found out I wasn't as weird as I thought I was. Maybe there is no such thing as normal. Maybe we're on the Wizard of Oz and we off to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Because all of us are... I'm tired of counseling husbands and wives who always want to tell me how short their spouse is and never admit that you're short too. You are proficient at measuring the wrong person. Take out your yardstick and measure yourself. You short too. That's why y'all got together. Y'all two short people. Two messed up crazy people. Two radical people. I saw something on the TV the other day that said, one of you, one of you is an introvert and quiet, and the other one is crazy. Which one are you? Are you the crazy one or the quiet one? One way or the other, we come up. He was short. He had a wicked job. He was sociologically deprived. He was no doubt psychologically introverted. He's wrestling with who he is, but he heard. Look at him, touch somebody and, and, and tell him I heard something. 
I know you don't want nobody to know you're a gossiper, but everybody in here gossips a little bit. Tell them I heard something, I heard something. I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard it through the grapevine. I heard, I heard that, I heard that, I heard that Jesus was passing by. Watch this. Your shambo. Glory to God. Watch this. This, this road he's on is the Jesus road. It's leading to Jerusalem and it has a traffic flow. And he decides I may be short and I may be rejected and I may be ostracized, but I'm gonna get in the flow. Somebody in this room, you're still not perfect. You're still wrestling with stuff. You're still trying to figure it out, but at least you're on the right road. Come on, come on. Give him a praise if you're on the right road. I'm on the right road. I'm on the right road. I, 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 I may be short, but I ain't deaf. I may be short, but I heard Jesus was passing by. And if I can find the right spot, I need a spot. I need a spot, y'all. I'm trying to find a spot where shortness don't matter. That's why worship has become so popular in the modern church today because nobody measures the height of the worshiper. You can be high, you can be low, you can be rich, you can be poor, but if you open your mouth and start praising God, nobody measures the height of the worshiper. And that's why when we say worship, you get all kind of people worship. People who've been fasting, people who've been praying, people who've been partying, uh, people who've been getting along, people who hadn't been getting along can get sucked up in the worship because worship makes up the difference between where I want to be and where I am. Give me 30 seconds of worship. Come on. I understand, I understand, I understand. I understand some of y'all can't worship because you're too dignified, and that's okay. Go ahead and be dignified. But see, when you're short, you get bullied. But when you worship, you get help. For the Bible said that the angels of the Lord encamp about them that fear him. And if you're feeling kind of short this morning, you need to open your mouth and give God some praise until the angels come and stand by your side. Yeah, I'm short, but I can praise him. I'm short, but I can clap my hands. I'm short, but I can lift him up. I'm not there yet, but I can give God the glory. I haven't accomplished everything, but I still know how to praise him. I count not myself as apprehended, but I still give him the glory. Don't let the suit fool you. I will break out in a praise. Don't let the head do fool you. I will praise the Lord. In fact, I got to praise him because I know I'm short. And if I don't praise him, I can't get high enough to be recognized. But when I, oh, I better quit. When I begin, when I just begin to give God the praise, I start standing up tall. Somebody stand up tall and give him a crazy praise. is happening to you just because you're in the flow. Just because you're in the flow. Just because you're on the right road. Just because you're in the right direction. Just because Jesus is coming your way. 
can I tell you to tell somebody Jesus is coming your way? <laughs> you may not see him right now, but he's coming your way. He's headed in your direction. He's coming up your street. He's coming into your circumstance. He's coming into your situation. He's coming into your circumstance. He's coming into your dilemma. If you just stand still and wait on the Lord, somebody spin around, Jesus is coming your way. He's coming into your storm. He's coming into your pain. He's coming into your shortness. He's coming into your crisis. Oh, oh, here he comes. He's a devil leader. Oh, oh, here he comes. He's a devil leader. Oh, oh, here he comes. I got a prophetic word for somebody. Oh, oh, here he comes. You've been trying to fight this by yourself, but oh, oh, here he comes. Oh, here he comes. Oh, oh, here he comes. Don't run, don't duck, don't hide, don't dodge. Just wait on him because you're in the flow. You're in the flow. There's a flow in the spirit. The Bible is called the Holy Spirit, a flow of living water. And if you get in the flow, it will change your life. For the next end of this message, I need a thousand people that are get in the flow. You may be dirty, Damon, but get in the flow. You may have leprosy, but get in the flow. You may be blind, but get in the flow. Because if there be any healing, if there be any healing, it's not going to come because of how tall you are. It's going to come because you got in the flow. See, Zacchaeus was hated. They called him a sinner. He worked for the Romans. He ripped off the Jews. The Jews hated him. The Romans didn't respect him. And he was short. But he got in the flow. Sometimes God doesn't bless you because of how gifted or talent or intellectual or smart you are. You just happen. You just happen to get in the flow. You didn't get that job because you were the most qualified. You just happen to get in the flow. And if you get in the flow where Jesus is passing by, something amazing is going to happen in your life. That's why I can't go to church with people who are trying to be cute because cute can't heal cancer. But if I get in the flow, God will open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. I won't have room to receive. If there's anybody in this room that needs a miracle, get in the flow. So let me hear, let me hear, let me hear. Sit down, because you're gonna make me. You'll make me. You'll make me holler. And if you make me holler, you're gonna make me run. If you make me run, you're gonna make me shout. If you make me shout, you're gonna make me holler. Because I don't mind hollering. Because I'm short. And if God is gonna get my attention, I gotta do something radical. I'm too short to be cool. I got to do something radical to get God's attention. Shout yes! And so, the story goes that the short man found a tall tree. <laughs> there is a way out of this for you. You just got to find a tall tree. 
And the Bible said that this rich man climbed a tree. Let me tell you something. Rich folk don't climb trees. Rich folk hire people to climb trees. I got some rich folk in here. There's not a rich person in here that climbs trees because that's why you got rich. So you wouldn't have to climb the tree. You don't trim your trees. You don't cut off dead limbs. You call somebody. Zacchaeus was rich. But the richness was not enough. Because sometimes the money don't pay for the poverty of living with the reality that try all I want, I come up. And every night I lay down. I don't lay down, I'm six foot two. I don't lay down as a person that's six foot two. I lay down short. But if I were not short, I would not be eligible for grace. That's why the Bible said, let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the poor say, I'm rich. Because grace is the differential <laughs> betwixt and between where I am and what I am called to be. Grace is the equalizer. Grace makes up the hedge and closes up the gap. Grace enables me to appear taller than I am. That part, that part. Now I got to live with you defining me by what grace has done. I like it. And I have to accept it as my identity while I deal with the reality that if it were not for God's grace, oh, y'all not going to help me. If it were not for God's grace, I'm so short. The Bible says he came to the sycamore fig tree. And he came to a tree that Jesus had cursed. Just a few pages back, Jesus has cursed a fig tree. Now blind, now, 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 now Zacchaeus, whose name incidentally means pure, Short but pure. Say your lesson. <laughs> Messed up but innocent. Wrong but right. Guilty but innocent. Y'all don't understand the dichotomy of the human experience. That's why I can't tell you who I am. Because you don't have time to hear. I can tell my therapist by the hour. But when you say how I'm doing, you don't really want to know. Because I would have to say I'm good, but I'm bad, and I'm, I'm excited, but I'm scared to death, and I'm nervous, but I got faith, and I believe God, but I'm worried to death, and, 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 and I'm, I'm righteous, but I'm freaky, and I'm holy, but I'm broken, and I'm, I'm sanctified, but I'm wild. And I, Yo, y'all not gonna talk to me. Come on, where the real people at? I just need some real people. Come on, I don't need no religious people. I need some real people that, that are filled with conflict and contradictions and things that are too difficult to explain. So we just say, I'm fine. I'm fine is easier than telling you I'm fragmented, I'm broken. If you flip me off, I go crazy. I got a temper like a lunatic, but I got a heart like pure gold. I give you the shirt off my back, but if you steal $20, I'll run over you with the car. See, I don't have time.
have to explain. Come on, real people. Come on, real people. We got to take over. So Zacchaeus climbs a tree that Jesus would curse all because he wants to be in the spot. And he cannot wait until Jesus gets there to hit the spot. See, you all say, when Jesus comes, I'm going to the spot. But when Jesus comes, it's going to be too late to go to the spot. You got to already be in the spot before Jesus passes by. And the reason your life is a mess is that you think you get to act a fool until you see Jesus and then you're going to hit the spot. But no, you got to hit the spot while Jesus is still coming. Watch this and I'll quit. I'll quit because I mess around feel like preaching. And if I mess around feel like preaching, it's going to be a problem. Because I feel something down on the inside. It's pushing me around right now. When I start preaching, and, and, and then when I start talking about being short, and I juxtapose being short against trees, I start to realize that every major redemptive thing that God would ever do, he would do it on a tree. It started in the Garden of Eden with the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it ended up on the cross when Jesus was hung out on the cross. And here we are studying trees. Zacchaeus climbs a type of tree that has been cursed and he waits on Jesus to pass by. Look at somebody say, hit the spot. Once you get in the spot, watch this y'all, listen, this is good. Once you get in the spot, don't let no devil in hell move you out of the spot. I know the blessing ain't come yet, but stay in the spot. Stand fast in the liberty where with Christ has made you free and stay in the spot. Neither give place to the devil. See, the devil is after territory. He's trying to move you out of your spot. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Holy Ghost sent me here to tell you, don't you move out of your spot. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It might not be working right now, So I'm out of time, I gotta close. Zacchaeus climbs the tree to see Jesus at the bottom of the tree. And all Zacchaeus had to do was hit the spot. Now the Bible says Zacchaeus didn't come to the spot. He actually got in the flow and created the spot. When it says somebody came to the spot, it wasn't Zacchaeus, it was Jesus. So God says if you position yourself right, Jesus is going to come to the spot. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, oh, I wish I had time. Y'all messing with me now. Y'all messing with me now. Watch this. Jesus didn't come to the person. He came to the spot. Jesus didn't come to the woman with the issue of blood. He came to the spot. Jesus didn't come to blind Bartimaeus. He came to the spot. 
Abraham wasn't looking for the ram, he came to the spot. Whenever you get in the spot, you don't have to worry about the blessing because the blessing will always come to the spot. Your question needs to be, Lord, help me to hit the spot. I may be ugly, but I'm in the spot. I may be broke, but I'm in the spot. I may be hated, but I'm in the spot. And I ain't gonna let no devil in hell push me out of the spot. So Pastor Cheryl, the Bible says, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible, the Bible says, not Zacchaeus came to the spot, but Jesus came to the spot. Can I tell you that Jesus is coming to the spot? And all, listen, all you have to do, you don't have to be taller. You don't have to be smarter. You don't have to be richer. All you got to do is hit the spot because he's coming to the spot. He told Abraham, there's a spot where the miracle will work. If you offer your son up on any other mountain, he's going to die. But go to the place I will show you. When you get in the right place, the provision is in the place. Come on, somebody. I don't have rams on no other mountain. I only got rams on the mountain that is the spot. Somebody holler, hit the spot. You've been thinking that it's something about your talent that made you exceptional. I hate to hurt your feeling. There are people in jail who can out sing you. There are people sleeping up under bridges who are a better architect than you are. There are people who are shooting up dope that would be a better CEO than you. The only reason you got where you got is because you, you hit the spot. So here's this quick exchange and I'll stop because we're going to go eat. Now, uh, Zacchaeus is up in a cursed tree looking down at a blessed Jesus. The blessed Jesus said, you got this backwards. I am supposed to be on the cursed tree. So in order to straighten this out, <laughs> You got to trade places with me. I got to go up on the tree so that you can walk down on the ground. And if you let me go up on the tree, I'll draw all men unto me. Can I preach this word? I need to preach this word. I need to tell somebody, come down out of your tree. Zacchaeus is a sinner. He can hang on the tree, but he can't redeem anybody on the tree. It has to be a righteous man who dies for sinners. If Jesus goes to the tree with him, he will have made the mistake of the first man, Adam. The first man, Adam, died with his bride. The second man, Adam, died for his pride. So Jesus says, both of us can't be on this tree together. So you got to come down so that I can go up. Who am I preaching to in the room? Is there anybody in this room that understands this is good preaching? If you know this is good preaching, give God a praise right now. I gotta quit. God wants to trade places with you. And here is the challenge. You won't come down out of your tree 
because you're short. And you built the tree so that nobody could see that you're short. Watch this. The very thing you're hiding is the very thing God wants. See, the people wanted you to be taller, but God loves short. So God says to Zacchaeus, if you will give up what you built to make you look good, if, if you will let go of your implicit desperate need for influence to compensate for your deep intrinsic insecurity, I blessed you because you were insecure. I blessed you because there were dents in your armor. I blessed you because there were cracks in you. And now you up on the tree trying to act like you that tall. You know you ain't that tall. I don't recognize you in that tree. If you come down out of your high horse and humble yourself, pass Oh, I'm trying to stop. If you humble yourself, God says, I will exalt you. So what it is, is a peak at substitution. Zacchaeus comes down so Jesus can go up. And God says, if you come down out of your tree and become cool with being short, I can handle you being short better than I can you camouflaging your shortness in a tree. I don't recognize you in the tree. I loved you when you wasn't important. I loved you. I loved you when you was nervous. I loved you when you were scared to death. I loved you when you were insecure. I loved you when you were on your face. I loved you when you wasn't worthy. I loved you when you laid on your face and sought me early in the morning because you thought without me, I can do nothing. And now you so important. And I cannot give you what I want to give you until you come down out of your tree. So he says to Zacchaeus, listen, I'm closing. Stand up, stand up, because I've got to close. He says, make haste and come down. Don't gradually come down. He says, make haste. He make haste. Come down in a hurry. Don't gradually forgive. Make haste and come down. Don't gradually transition. Make haste and come down. Don't gradually evolve. Make haste and come down. Don't protect your image. Make haste and come down. So Zacchaeus made haste and he came down. And then Jesus says to him what he never said to him in the tree. As long as he was in the tree, Jesus never offered to stay at his house. Wow. Jesus says, I will not live with you until you come down. If you come down out of your tree, I will come and stay with you.
when Zacchaeus made haste to come down, everybody was talking about it. He a sinner. Jesus don't know who he living with. How could Jesus go stay at his house? He's a tax collector. None of that was the problem. The problem was Zacchaeus had a complex about his insecurities that he camouflaged. I have learned that most people's behavior is dyslexic. Weak people are generally mean. To protect the lamb they roar. Arrogant people, whenever you meet a man that's arrogant, don't respond to his arrogance because his arrogance is his tree. His insecurity is what drove him up the tree. So the reason he's trying to be important is because he's short. And you're attacking him like he's a tree person. Annoyed at his arrogance rather than ministering to his insecurity. I'm not a billionaire. I might not ever be a billionaire, but I got friends who are billionaires and I found out that the only people who dress rich is poor folks. <laughs> billionaires have on tennis shoes and, 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 and jeans from Target while you got Gucci bags and Louis Vuitton. You know why the billionaire dresses down? Because they don't need a tree. You know why poor people will spend their last dollar to get a rich bag? Because they don't want you to know how short they are. You know how people who need love act like they don't have time for love? I'm a career woman. I'm a career man. I don't need anybody. I got to shut up. You know as well as I do that money ain't no company at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so to all my tree people, if you come down this morning out of your tree, Jesus will stay at your house. As I close this morning's message, I just wonder if there's anybody who's got the courage. It ain't easy. It takes a lot of courage to come down out of the tree. The tree makes you look good. The tree makes you look tall. The tree puts you in a category of exceptionalism. Why do you think he was a tax collector in the first place? He wanted to be important. You think you're ambitious. No, you're broken. And you are trying to use ambition to add value to your life. And as long as you need a thing to make you valuable. It's an admission that you are not valuable. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. The tree has become your idol. You praise God with your mouth, but you won't let nobody touch your tree because your tree is your God. Where is my musician? Did he die? Your tree... Call the paramedics. Your tree... Come on, stay with me. I'm human, I already told you, I'm complicated. I can quote scriptures and go off all at the same time. I'm weird like you. Look at me, here's the question. Will you hold on to your tree at the expense of losing Jesus?
will you spend the rest of your life climbing up on stuff to give you a strategic advantage? Or will you trust God for your shortness? 